Welcome again. This is the Rock Talk Show. I'm your host, Phil Chalosky. Today, I have a very special guest, local musician, Jerry Duffy. Welcome to the show. One, two, three, four! Let's take you back to the beginning. Uh, back, you were born in England. How did you become a musician, and how did that all begin? Well, like most people, I was uh, I was born at a very early age, which, uh, when you think about it, is true, right? How I became a musician? Well, back in the early '60s, I guess, when everything was going on, everything was happening over there—the Beatles, Rolling Stones, you name it—that's when I got really involved in. Uh, meeting a couple of guys who also played guitars and we didn't we didn't know anybody who played drums so I just started playing drums and uh, we went from there I uh, saved up from my little local paper round job during the uh, early mornings and uh, gradually got our drum kit together and you're saying at the time because the explosion of the music scene the British invasion and all that encompassed it was hard to get instruments it was hard to find yeah uh, apparently uh, the years 64 through 66 was uh, musical instruments everywhere in Britain were just flying out the stores as you can imagine like everybody wanted to become a musician yeah. you know some made it some didn't and uh, that's just the way it went I mean uh, it was a great time for for everybody over there you said that you worked in a studio can you tell us talk to us about that um, yeah, I spent, uh, I was only there about 18 months at IBC Studios at, uh, in West End of London. But it was an intense 18 months, a very intense, because uh, a lot of times you'd be in a session and you wouldn't see daylight for hours and hours, because you're just in there working, setting up this, setting up that, rerunning stuff. Primarily, as I said before, I was working with The Who, doing the Tommy album, and uh, Spent a lot of time with the Bee Gees, going through a lot of their material in the early days. And uh, who else did I work with? Oh man, Rolf Harris, who was a prominent guy from Australia. Uh, spent a day with Paul and Linda McCartney, who uh, he was in producing a, a song. At the time, the band were called the Ivies, who later then became Badfinger. And uh, they were in for just, uh, just a day, just shooting, a, doing a song. And I happened to be working on that session, and that was really interesting. Got to meet uh, the guy. <laughs> the guy. Uh, and you were talking about the Who, how they were different personalities. Obviously, people know Pete, Pete Townsend as the mastermind, but each of them had their own solo careers and pursuits. Yeah, uh, well, they did. Uh, at the time, Townsend uh, was producing two other acts. One was called Ashton Gardner and Dyke, which were a sort of powerhouse trio. And uh, another chap called, or band called Thunderclap Newman, who had a pretty big hit called Something in the Air, which was released in North America. And uh, I'm sure if you heard it, you'd, you'd know the song. I'd sing it, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, it, quite the difference. People would know the Bee Gees as a softer, obviously went on to do disco and be a big phenomenon in that world, but the Who were a rock band. Uh, can you tell us about the the two bands being so different and working with such different... Well, the, the funny thing is, is that one day the band, the Who would be in the same studio as the, as the Bee Gees, but on different days, obviously, because <laughs> they're so different. But um, uh, on one instance, um, this is a story I, I'd heard about, that uh, Keith Moon, being Keith Moon, uh, did something rather outrageous one day. He, uh, he pushed uh, the Mellotron, which the Bee Gees used extensively on a lot of their material. Uh, Keith Moon decided he'd push it down the lift shaft. So, so down it went. I wasn't there that day or when this happened. But there was quite a big fuss made about that. So um, I, uh, I decided not to come in the next day. Because <laughs> I'd been in the studio for like 18 hours straight. So Jerry, uh, can you tell us any wild stories? Some weird wacky things have happened in your life as a musician or engineer and studio work? Um, I'll, I'll take you back to a time when uh, we were doing a mobile recording 
I was uh, working with a chap called John Pantry. He was uh, one of the main engineers at the IBC. And uh, we were called out to do a mobile recording at a place called the Wigmore Hall in West London. And uh, we were using the Rolling Stones 16 channel mobile unit. And we were recording a couple called Tim Hollier and Armory Kane. These were a, a duo quite uh, just on the up and coming back then. And uh, so we get there and the truck arrives and um, I'm busy running cables and setting up the stage for the uh, two acoustic guitars and mics and stuff like that. And uh, while I was doing that, I was working from the van, running all these cables through. And uh, there was a chap in the, in the washroom where uh, I had to run the cables through to get onto the stage. And this chap was always there, uh, putting, getting dressed up and makeup and this and that. And uh, he was just always like, wherever I wanted to go with a cable, he was just like always in the way. And I said, please, like, you know, you're in my way, you know? And uh, he said, oh, okay, you know, I'm sorry and all that. So it was all right. We, we managed to get it all done, no problem. And uh, at the end of the, uh, at the end of the venue, uh, John, John Pantry, the engineer, said to me, he says, you know who that was? I said, no, I had no idea who that was. He says, that was David Bowie, who was getting dressed in the, in the washroom when you were running wires through. I had no idea, you know, it's this tall, lanky, skinny guy getting all this stuff on, you know. Well, thank you, Jerry, for being on the show. We had a lot of fun. We did, anytime. Anytime. Well, that's our interview here on the Rock Talk Show. And we'll see you again. I'm your host, Phil Chalowski. Till next time. One, two, three, four.